Hey guys, on this episode of Make It Real, we're building the Resistance Crossbow from Half-Life. That's right, it shoots Red Hot Rebar. This video is sponsored by Next Games, which allowed us to build this awesome weapon for hunting the undead. Now obviously we're going to need quite a bit of steel for this project, so we're going to go to the supermarket. The supermarket? Yeah, the metal supermarket. <laughs> All right, so how are we gonna build the Half-Life 2 resistance crossbow? Well, as you can see, I've got some nice blueprints here, a screenshot from the video game. So let's figure it out. The beauty with this project is it's literally made out of scrap materials in the game, which means we can actually make it look just like this quite easily. So first of all, we're gonna need some box tube, which we've got right here. Now, the trickiest part about building a crossbow is probably the release mechanism. So we're gonna cheat a little. So we just got a cheap crossbow here. As you can see, it's actually a pretty slick little crossbow. We could actually modify this to become the resistance crossbow, but I'd rather make it look just like the one in the game. We could also make use of the existing limbs, but I think it would be cooler to try and use this. So this is actually a truck leaf spring, and it might be a bit powerful. So yeah, it bends a little bit. I think we're probably gonna have to remove a few of these extra pieces of steel. Oh yeah, I think that'll do the trick. Now, because the weapon we're making is gonna be really accurate, we're gonna need a scope. So I picked up this airsoft scope, which is actually a 4X scope, complete with a illuminated red and green crosshair. Like, I'm kind of joking, like, it's not gonna be accurate, but we've got this scope. Because as you know, adding a scope adds 10 plus uh, accuracy points. All right, so as you can see in the design, the limbs actually, this is actually technically a compound crossbow, whereas the crossbow we have is just a regular one. So we're actually gonna use these pulleys and add them to the ends of our uh, crossbow limb. Next step will be to actually cut a groove out of these two pieces in order to fit the pulleys inside. All right, time to take apart the crossbow and see how we can make use of the components we have. All right, so we're gonna start by trimming off all the unnecessary parts of the original crossbow. So we're gonna cut off the tailstock. Molten plastic, gross. Dremel probably would've been a better idea, but too late. Oh, I gotta, I gotta remove the fun, cool part. All right, so we might have to go a bit off the plan. First of all, the actual trigger mechanism is behind the grip. Yeah, I wish these welds were a bit prettier. Now, as you can imagine, this is a very expensive and time-consuming project. In fact, we wouldn't even be able to do it if not for our sponsors. So I'd like to take a minute and tell you a bit about this game I've been playing. It's called The Walking Dead, No Man's Land. I put a link in the description below, including a special offer that's only available right now. It's a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game, so if you're the kind of person who likes playing chess or checkers, you'll probably like it. The best part is, it's an officially licensed Walking Dead game, which means you get to play the characters from the show in actual Walking Dead locations, including Alexandria. During my trip down to Michigan for the art prize with Ian, I played this game for hours and made it pretty far. It's kind of addictive. During your turn, you move your characters around, but every time you move, the zombies move too, which means you'll have to use a bit of strategy and problem solving to get out of tight places. And beyond adventuring, you also get to set up your camp, build up your fortress, and defend it. And if you're a fan of the TV show, The Walking Dead, you're gonna recognize the in-game characters like Rick, Michonne, Ezekiel, Daryl, and even Negan, who's a special character you can get for free right now if you use my download link below. 
One of the newest updates to the game includes a new game mode called The Distance, which is a bi-weekly event where you play a survival mode. There's also a new crafting mode that lets you collect components and craft badges for your survivors to increase their attributes. The game is available on Android, iOS, and pretty much every other device. So if you like zombies, saving humanity, and being a certified apocalypse survivor, download the game for free today. The offer is only available right now, so go ahead and click the first link in the description below. Alright, let's finish this crossbow. I think Daryl will need it. Now honestly, it's not actually as heavy as I thought it would be. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy. Still gotta add some stuff to it, but I can flex it with my fingers. I'm just scared to pull it all the way. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so we've been able to actually draw and fire the crossbow, which is pretty awesome. So we had a bit of difficulty when we made it. It was just too damn powerful. And what we did to try and fix that was first, we machine slots into the limb of the crossbow so it'd be a bit easier to actually drop back. That still wasn't enough, so we made the slots even bigger and we actually used our Tormach CNC uh, milling machine to do a nice little uh, curve right here. Unfortunately, it was still actually really hard to draw back. Now we didn't want to weaken it anymore, so we decided to turn to a compound crossbow. But we actually went out and we bought better, higher rated pulleys that are a bit smaller that we're going to replace them with. So let's do that right now. Which means we have to actually now add the most iconic part, which is the actual heating up the rebar part. So we've got a few copper bus bars, which were actually in a machine in our Tormach CNC machine, had a, a slight groove for the piece of rebar to sit in them. Mail's here! What is it? Is it steel? It's AR-500. Ah. Bulletproof steel. Ah. We're making the frying pan from PUBG. What? We are seeing how much current it takes to heat up one of these projectiles. So we have two car batteries in parallel now. Hypothetically, we should be able to get about 2,000 amps out of these. Ready? No. Jesus. Oh, she's getting red hot. How's our current? There we go, look at that. Red hot. What did we get? Uh, Ian, you I had got one job. You I had got one job. I got distracted by the red hot 900. Is it dropping? Yeah. What's it at now? 850. <laughs> oh. So as you can see, there's also a sweet spot before the red hot metal gets highly unstable. Just for shits and giggles, we're gonna see how much power it will take to heat up actual rebar. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Those are some pretty good sparks. So the other issue with actual rebar is because it's all rusty <laughs> and rough, it is super hard to actually get a good contact. So honestly, the other option is probably better. Ew, wow, it literally like cut through the arc. All right, test two. <laughs> Damn it. Too bad we can't fit two car batteries on the bottom of our crossbow. How are we gonna power this crossbow? We thought we were gonna be able to use some of the normal Zippy LiPo batteries that we had already, but it turns out they're not powerful enough. And in the game, they use a, what looks like a six volt lantern battery, and that would just not heat up a piece of rebar. So we're gonna have to use some modern technology. Each of these can actually put out 250 amps, which means all eight of them together puts out around 2000 amps. Plus, they have a peak discharge rate of double that. So that means hypothetically, we could put out 4000 amps. That's almost 30 kilowatts of energy. Why are you guys staring at me? Now we want to make this look as close to the crossbow in the game as possible. So we're going to disguise these lipos as lantern battery. And to do that, I got some yellow duct tape. Ha! And there you have it, one lantern battery. So, we still need to connect the, uh, the power wires from the battery to the contactor, which connects to this copper bus bar here. And then the battery connects directly to the bus bar in the front, making a short on the rebar in between them. Now, before we do that, because we're basically gonna have to take off 
take apart the entire gun just to fit the wire through the inside of the gun, we've got to add a stirrup so we can actually load this thing. Yay! You hear that beep? It means it's connected. Three, two, one. Yeah, I gotta get my fingers out before something bad happens. Okay. That's good. He's like, if that mechanism failed as I'm pulling my fingers out. Hmm. The safety didn't auto-engage that time. Please work, trigger mechanism. Yes. All right, so just for a point of reference, we're gonna try shooting a regular crossbow to see how it compares to the one we built. That's so easy. Crossbows are cool. But yeah, once again, this is how easy 135 pound draw across boom, is the load, just like that. Cannot do that on mine. Well, let's shoot it once more since it's loaded. You can't dry fire these things. Yeah, we shouldn't shoot this one. I saw another one somewhere. I like crossbows. All right, back to our crossbow. Come on. Three, two, one. Ah. Okay. All right, first test of the crossbow. Uh, we're not gonna heat anything up just yet, but let's see if it can shoot a regular arrow. Oh, you're so heavy. <laughs> All right, ready? All right, let's move on to uh, some more serious firepower, more serious ammunition. <laughs> Bolt so heavy it knocks down the target. And bent it. Oh my god. Can I just shoot it from the ground? Do I have to hold it? Holy shit. Okay, not too many sparks. Here we go. Why is it not turning red? Here we go. Holy. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna aim for this. Call the smoke. Ooh, she's getting hot. Keep going, keep going. No, it's gonna go. When it shoots, it's gonna be crazy. Holy <laughs> I hit the apple! <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, zoom in, get the steam. <laughs> that tastes really good. Shit, did I turn the side down? Can I set you off for me? Forwards? Give me a stop. Alright, ready? Um, baby. <laughs> well, I missed it, but half her skull's gone. Alright. Oh boy. Come on! Yeah! <laughs> Let's talk about what we're gonna test this on. We actually picked up some Ivan heads from Zombie Go Boom. But unfortunately, these things don't come with brain matter. On this episode of Cooking with a Hacksmith, we're making zombie brains. We don't have a lid, do we? It's gonna be messy. No, no, we don't have a lid. Put that back. Have you guys ever seen chicken hearts before? What's the candy that's shaped like this? No, Swedish, but kind of like it's like a gumdrop, but like a like a. They're weird. Oh yeah. Do you have any eggs in the fridge?
This was actually Ian's lunch. Um, he graciously donated it to Cooking with Axsmith. These, these eggs are bad. Man, that is nasty. I guess I'll just I'll jam a few chicken hearts in. You need the heart to gain the strength. Have a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer. And there you have it. Zombie brains. You made a lot of extra. You want some? Hello, uh, my name is Gordon uh, Hackman. I'm, I'm, I'm a research associate at the Black Mesa facility in the Anomalous Materials Department. At least I was until e everything kind of went sideways. Um, so I, I've had to create this weapon to uh, deal with the issues we've been having. So uh, l let me show you how it works. All right, now it's time to test our highly experimental weapon for killing head crabs. Uh, I mean zombies. I guess we gotta draw this first. Now, for the purpose of this test, we want to make sure we have an exact baseline for the weapon, so we're going to be shooting it from this platform as opposed to actually holding it. All right, so we're ready to test. Safety off. That's fine. Ooh, it really sliced the head open now. Take two. I don't think I've ever seen this happen to an Ivan head before. So I think we. I, I think they're flammable. I didn't actually, holy crap. I didn't quite get to the red hot part, so that's why it's not on fire. He's not having a good day. There we go. There we go. What? So in the game, when uh, these red hot rebars stick into friggin' concrete, that's just that would never happen because once it's red hot, it's malleable, it is soft. Uh, as you can see here, like it literally became like a, almost like a little corkscrew and pretty much all of them have bent. So, so one thing Half-Life probably got a little bit wrong with the, uh, the physics in that game, among other things, probably. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's pretty effective. All right, so the resistance crossbow proves pretty effective against zombie heads, especially because it actually lights them on fire. So it, even if you don't get a critical hit, you're lighting that zombie's head on fire, and they're not going to last very long after that. But we got to finish this guy. And I got a crowbar. Oh, Jesus Christ, those things are hard. <laughs> okay, I'm a lot more impressed that the bolt went through him now, like seeing how hard this skull is.
All right, final test, big bolt, super red hot. We're gonna see what it looks like in slow motion when it literally squiggles itself on this plywood skid. All right, so we're likely pumping around 15 to 20 kilowatts of electricity into this piece of steel. And it is just glowing orange hot. It is going to start melting soon. We need to shoot it. Ready? Oh, it didn't go too squiggly. These definitely would fly a bit better if we actually had some uh, Fletchings. Fletchings on them. Yeah. That way. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that project. Uh, we had a ton of fun making it, and we're super thankful to our sponsor for helping make it a reality, because we wouldn't have been able to do this project without them. So please check out their game, The Walking Dead No Man's Land. There's a link in the description below, and a special offer that's only available right here. As always, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. You're not going to want to miss our next projects. And don't forget to check out our other Make It Real projects in this playlist right here. Thanks for watching.